get back into this. I think for the, the sake of expediency, for the sake of expediency, I'm, I'm going to give up on trying to follow exactly what they had in their example. And we'll just return a div or something. Here we go. Uh, that, that does something in the uh, all too likely event of there being an error. Uh, so let's see if this actually does something, right? So also let me uh, get the dev tools up. So one thing I would expect with how this um, is currently implemented. There we go. We call uh, find rendered episode files basically immediately. And then the response has an entry. There we go. There's our file. Uh, we have a file name in here, right? We do. So if I click browse, ah, uh, it's broken. Well, all oh right, because we, <laughs> we've not actually hooked up the data, right? We have the data um, here and then it, it, it should be data. Uh, yeah which is an any, so that works. And now everything is typed correctly. And if I switch back to here, entries that find is not a function. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, in Media Picker, uh, line 25 isn't a line, but presumably what's happening is that what's the, what's the shape of the data again? Oh, right, it's a, so it returns an object that has an entries key. Thought entries. Yeah. Okay. So lots of errors, but I don't care. Uh, browse, hey look, it's a file. What's this error? <laughs> uh, a component is changing an uncontrolled input. This is likely caused by the value changing from undefined to a defined value, which should not happen. Decide between using a controlled or uncontrolled. Okay. So, um, sure. Okay. This is also a problem. Uh, that has to do with, okay. Two problems. <laughs> Uh, two problems. One is in Media Picker. Um, and we didn't see this when we were looking at the story because we changed the thing after the story. Um, so specifically, we added this label uh, here. I think, let's do this. If there is a value, then we won't show a label. Uh, it'll be empty. If there's no value, then we show no file selected. Now the value for the, this is, this is probably where the, uh, the undefined, like the controlled versus uncontrolled thing is coming from. So what we should do for value here is if this is undefined, we should have an empty string. So there's always something defined that's being pa passed in as value. So now if we refresh this page, clear errors, seems good. And then browse, choose, there we go. Uh, we can talk about alignment and stuff, but it's it's fine. Um, and what's cool is that clearly, let's go back. So notice how save is disabled. If I s select things, if I hit cancel, ooh, that's a that's improper. <laughs> I mean, it says no file selected, but why is there a value there? Uh, so that's another issue that we could have found if we explored more in the storybook, but didn't. Uh, if we cancel, we want to, uh, we want to handle cancel. Uh, handle cancel. PL, yes. And then handling the cancel involves clearing the entry uh, in addition to setting choosing to be false. Uh, so we want to set entry to be undefined. Not necessarily. 
We want to set it to uh, default entry. It's so clever. Um, because if we if we hit this page and we've already selected something, we want cancel to restore it back to how it was, right? So if we select this and hit cancel, we click this and it's not selected anymore. We click choose. Now save changes. I click save. Uh, and then hopefully this works. I'm not getting any errors. I go back to episode one. It's there. I refresh, do a hard refresh of the page. Uh, it's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, so uh, what happened? Uh, so somewhere here we did a put to update. Uh, and we stream ID, thumbnail, title, tracks, ID. Um, oh, that's the response. The request had the render URI. The response did not have that. It should have. Oh, right. So there was something we were missing in the, uh, the backend changes. Lunch is still on the way. The stream is gonna end in uh, either 40 something minutes or when food arrives. Uh, but in the meantime, so the back end. So CRUD API handlers episode, when we do the update. When we do the update, we do this and then um, we get result, and that should do a thing. And then we return episode detail view, which has a render URI, potentially, from results. So, why? Oh, I didn't deploy the backend changes, right? <laughs> Docker, Docker compose up. I haven't done this during the stream, have I? Um, okay, that might be why. Uh, now this does go through everything, but fortunately we have a lot of cached stuff. Um, thanks to the, uh, the Docker file we're using for our Rust services that uh, is based heavily on what Brainless Society provided. So otherwise this would be a lot slower. Hmm. So yeah, that would explain why so if you, if you just navigate in the app, there is some um, caching and some retention of data in the front end, in the act admin. So even if the record doesn't actually update in the back end, the front end will, uh, it does kind of optimistic updates. And when it doesn't get an error back, it thinks everything's good and it's cached value from what the user entered is good as well. And that may or may not be the case. In this case, not. Uh, the orphan container thing right here, this warning, is because the work for the uh, the Twitch bot is in a separate branch. So it's not present in the branch that I'm, work branch that I'm working in. Uh, so it, uh, it doesn't know about that. Uh, I, I'm gonna close Storybook as well. We don't need that around anymore. Uh, and then, Go back to here. Just refresh for thoroughness. There we go. Uh, we'll select our file again. Hit save. Um, and then that flushes through. So that was that put request that saved the render URI. Uh, and it came back in the response. So that's a good sign that it actually did persist. Uh, if we go back to episode one, it's here. If I refresh, it should still be there. Yeah, if I click browse, it is already selected. 
So there, we did it. Uh, now, <laughs> well. Wayne's the dev just followed. Wayne's that dev, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Uh, all right, so that is <laughs> the, the next step. This whole thing is the next step, right? So we, we have the file linked to the episode record. Uh, so the next thing is actually the thing that I was trying to uh, be prepped for for the beginning of the stream. Uh, and we can see if we can make a little progress towards it before my food arrives. Uh, but it's going to be to actually upload the file. Like we want uh, somewhere for there to be an upload option. Probably, well, two things. One, we'll probably not wor worry about too much about the UI for it because it's gonna be like um, something where we're gonna take the URI here, right? Because we're showing you a file name but it is actually the, the URI here that's in the record. So that plus uh, like title and description from the episode record is gonna get sent to um, a YouTube upload microservice or something, uh, which is gonna be responsible for actually then ha managing the uh, OAuth tokens to call the API to like, allocate a video record and then manage the upload. Um, and that's going to be interesting. I think probably the way that's going to work is the way our other long running processes do where we have, uh, let's, let's look at an example and, and start shutting, cl closing some of these tabs. Uh, there we go. And this, and this, and this, and don't worry, this is not secret. This is just the uh, information from the uh, registration of the account for the Google API uh, with the secrets removed and I have environment variables. Um, but as an example, let's look at silence detection or maybe, uh, maybe the transcript one, the transcription API. So the transcription API, uh, the way it works is that there is a top level endpoint called detect and that route has a handler and that handler um, is responsible for parsing the, uh, the provided body uh, and doing a little bit of validation. And then what it does is it calls the, um, um, the task API. And the task API then takes a payload that includes the details about what it needs to do to asynchronously behind the scenes uh, do the task, potentially in multiple steps. Um, I suspect that at least for right now, it'll probably just be one step. I just don't want to have something where the front end would call our YouTube video upload API and then that request would just sit there until the file was uploaded. Um, whereas I don't have a problem with the task API calling back to our YouTube upload uh, API and waiting there until the request completes. Or we could do something else. Um, I think one thing the task API doesn't really support right now is, um, I guess it, it sort of does because the idea with the task API is that you tell it what to call. In this case, we're telling it to call back to the service transcription API to detect segment. And here's the payload details that need to be carried through. And here is where you find in the result, the segments. The task API knows that there will be a cursor in the response if there's more work to do and it will continuously call back to this provided URL with the, the provided cursor value. So we could have something like that as kind of a continuation while we're processing the upload. If we do like chunked uploads, maybe. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, 
in the case of this, I believe the task API. So let, let's take a look at this. How, how did we structure this? So this API base URL is being populated from an environment variable uh, somewhere up here at the top. There we go. Uh, from an environment variable called this API base URL. Uh, and that is actually the name of the container for these services. So it's calling directly into the service, not through Nginx, through our front end proxy. Um, and the services don't have hard limits on how long the request can wait for. So I think it would be, um, it would work if we build a new service called YouTube Upload API that would have a top level endpoint that gathers the information, hands it off to the task API. The task API would then just make a single request. So the, the response to that single request when it's done would be, would have a, a like a, a null cursor. So the task API, the task API as it works normally now, um, task API main, um, we have the tasks endpoint uh, that we can post to. Um, Oh, right, right. So this, the, the, the task system is two parts. One is the task API that the services interact with and the front end can theoretically interact with, no, not theoretically, it does, it does, um, for checking the status of a task. Um, and then there's a task worker. The task worker doesn't have an API. It interacts with the queued tasks that are in Redis that the task API sets up. So this is an example where we have two services that have a shared database, Redis, and are interchanging information that way. I think I'm okay with that as long as the task worker doesn't have its own API. The only way to communicate with it is through this interface defined with these Redis keys and values and such. Uh, I think that makes sense. It's kind of a behind the scenes thing. So yeah, all that. So next steps, what do we need to do for our YouTube upload API? Um, there's a few things. Can we, what do we need to do next? Probably let's make a crate. Cargo something. Cargo new. And we're going to call this uh, um, YouTube Upload API. And it made it. Is it a lib though? It's not a lib. All right, this is, uh, <laughs> I've gotten used to PowerShell and uh, uh, I guess that bar is fine too. Uh, <laughs> and RM will then prompting you. Uh, there we go. All right. So if we do cargo new, is it dash dash app? No. What is it? Um, I guess. There we go. Just that. No dash dash lib. In other words, it's not a library. It is. It is an application. It is a new service. And we have a cargo.toml and an SRC. Um, and there's things we can do. And we also updated our cargo.toml here to add it automatically on top of our other crates. Um, and we're gonna have to do a bunch of stuff here in terms of <laughs> basically all the, well, we, fortunately we do have a common API lib that does a lot of the Axum setup and tracing and all that stuff for us. Uh, so we'll be able to bring that in. Um, I think for what we want to do right now, though, we want to define probably the the most interesting thing out of all of this. Um, well, there's, there's two things, right? There's actually uploading to YouTube, and that is going to be a multi-step process. And I don't think I'm going to have time to do all of that today. 
So that'll probably be our next Sunday stream where we pick this up. Uh, I think what we can do right now is define kind of the payload structure. I had some notes. Uh, so this was this is the issue that we've been working on today. Number six in the glowing telegram project, uh, which now the project itself, uh, like the project planner is pu publicly available. Um, there is a project uh, a repository uh, on GitHub, Sabin slash glowing telegram that uh, all of the source code, all the stuff I've been working on is gonna be pushed up to. Uh, what we had as of this morning is already pushed up. I'll be pushing up the, the rest into my PR that's linked to uh, number 23, that's linked to this, this issue uh, somewhere uh, along the line here today, probably. Uh, but we're done with this, right? We have a way to link the render to the episode. We did that. Um, now we need to have an API that we can give the details to and it will upload that render to YouTube. Uh, and we know things that we want, title, description, tags, category, and whether or not we want to notify subscribers when we upload. Um, so that's something that I had started doing because I know it's, it's kind of a weird thing with a VODs channel. I think a lot of like the things that get most views actually are the VODs of these streams where I'm doing coding. Uh, versus my playing video games. Uh, I think people are mo more motivated <laughs> to, to watch stuff about coding because it has a practical application to things that make you money. Um, but uh, yeah, so what I started doing is for the gaming VODs, I don't have it notify sub subscribers. So you have to go look for it um, and that's, that's kind of why people have like multiple YouTube channels rather than having to deal with that. But anyway, uh, enough behind, behind the scenes stuff. So what we need to do is we need to drive, um, we need to struct. Yes, uh, <laughs> YouTube upload, there you go. Copilot, you did it. Um, except, yeah, a, tags can be a vector of string, category is a string. Um, it's, it's not going to be video path. It's going to be like, um, uh, we're, we're going to call it render URI to uh, align with how we're doing things elsewhere. Hey, Sneaky Spudsworth. How's it going? I'm doing fine. Welcome. How's your Sunday been going? I'm uh, probably gonna wrap up the stream here pretty soon because, oh yeah, food's here. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish my thought with this struct and then we're going to uh, figure out who we're gonna raid. Good so far resting after tiling yesterday. Uh, is that, is it your first time doing tiling or is that a, a regular occurrence? Uh, a bathroom, a kitchen, a business? What are we talking about? Square footage? <laughs> uh, we're gonna want to drive. How do, how do we do this again? Drive? No, we're not deny length. That's silly. Drive. Yeah, probably debug. Serialize and debug. There we go. Uh, and save that. And it's gonna give us some errors because, hey, that doesn't, that's not a thing that exists. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll need the uh, Surdy JSON stuff, I think, to uh, or Surdy or whatever to uh, to be able to import that. Uh, yes, title, description, tags, category, uh, render URI, so we have like we know internally where we can find the file, and then uh, thumbnail URI, optionally, although I didn't list it there, we can we can we can include it as an option. Um, I was planning on coming back at some point and implementing that. And then um, uh, notify subs, notify subscribers is a Boolean. Uh, so that, that's kind of a start. And so we're gonna build an API around taking that payload, calling the uh, task API to schedule a task, essentially to queue up a task to actually do the upload. And then we'll have a separate API endpoint on this service the task API calls that will actually do the upload, 
do error handling and resumable upload stuff, like I've linked in the ticket. Uh, so TBD on all that. Uh, Sneaky says, it is the first time we're retiling our bathroom, small space, but took a long time getting the cuts right. Yeah, that is the tricky part, right? And especially uh, <laughs> if, if you don't start off the right way, I feel like I, I've not actually done tiling, but I've watched a lot of videos. Uh, in aspirations of eventually doing it. I, I have done um, um, the the vinyl, the luxury vinyl tile, actually, not like ceramic. So I guess I have done a little bit of, the, of that, but that's much easier to cut. But, you know, pre-planning things can be important. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up the stream here because my food is getting cold. Um, the next stream is tomorrow evening uh, modded Minecraft, Great Tech New Horizons, um, getting through low voltage stuff and someday medium voltage, uh, random stuff going on there. Uh, Wednesday, Power World multiplayer with subs. Friday, I don't know. Uh, get in the Discord <laughs> and suggest what we should do uh, on the stream on Friday. Your suggestion will turn into uh, a poll at the beginning of the stream, and then that's what I'll be doing, whether that's leak code problems like it was last Friday, or is it going to be uh, more PAL Worlds or modded Minecraft, or something that's uh, one of the other many games I have on Steam that's listed in the gaming channel on Discord. Uh, you decide. And then uh, next Sunday, coding stream again. Uh, and uh, that, is all the things I have to say, except thank you so much everyone for coming to the stream today.